this morning. I want to read one verse this morning. James chapter number one, we'll begin reading this morning in verse number 16. We'll read, uh, actually we'll read two verses, preach out of verse number 17 this morning, the Lord be willing. And I want you to, to listen. Uh, James has, in the previous part of the chapter, James has uh, been uh, talking to his readers. He's talking to them about their temptations and if they handled the temptations wrong, the things that it could lead to. And he talks about that when uh, one is drawn away of his own lust, and when that lust has conceived, it bringeth forth the sin, and sin uh, bringeth forth death. Then James says in verse number 16 of chapter number 1, he said, Do not err, my beloved brethren. I want you to listen to verse number 17. He said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above Amen. and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turn. Our Father, we again want to say thank you for the day Thank you for the time. Thank you, for, Lord, for the word of God this morning. Lord, we ask you to bless the preaching of it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. James has just given his readers, uh, his readers uh, a thought about their trials, their temptations that would come and how they would respond to them. Verse 16, he goes a step further and says, Do not err, my beloved brother. And James cares deeply for these readers, and he cares uh, deeply for us this morning. Our God does. And then in verse 17, James is going to make it clear that, uh, in, uh, this, this, that this world has nothing to offer to the believer. Let me just say that again. This world has nothing to offer to you. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, this world is not my home. Amen. Amen. The song said I'm just a passing through. I'm glad that I'm a soldier, aren't you? I, I'm glad that I'm just passing through. Amen. And James is uh, these temptations James is talking about, these trials, uh, things uh, that, uh, that oftentimes... Uh, uh, look good to to us. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes they even look better than what God has uh, provided or what God has given us. James is wanting his readers, he's wanting us to understand here this morning that uh, that every uh, every good gift, that every perfect gift comes from above. Uh, the world this morning uh, 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 paints temptation in a in a uh, in lust in a good picture this morning in a way that that everything looks good. It it uh, it's the good things that they'd have you believe that the world can give you uh, good things that the world can give you those perfect things. Uh, but James wants his readers. He wants us to understand this morning that that we serve a God who, who is the only one who Amen. can give us those good things uh, and those perfect things in our lives. Amen. Oliver B. Green said it probably the best I'd ever heard it said or ever have heard it said. He said, if God, he said, it's good. If not God, he said, not good. Amen. Amen. Uh, and that's just simple uh, country probably vernacular, but he said, if God, uh, good. If not God, Bad. And I remind you today that if you're saved, uh, it was the goodness of God uh, that, that, that led you to repentance. Uh, you say, preacher, uh, when God convicted me of my sin, I felt so miserable. Uh, let me just say this this morning, that miserable feeling this morning, uh, that was the goodness of God uh, bringing you to repentance. Amen. And he said in verse 17, he said every good gift Every perfect gift is from above. 
and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of a turning. This morning I'd like to, if God would allow us, I'd like to look at this thought, uh, life's trials and the goodness of God. Life's trials and the goodness of God. You do understand you're going to have some trials in life. Amen. Yeah. You're going to have some temptations in life. Matter of fact, you promise seven things in this life. They, they, they're all uh, trouble, trials, temptations. They're all, they're all things that uh, 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 we would consider not good. And our sin nature this morning is, is one that causes us to yield uh, uh, to, uh, to the seduction of sin uh, and evil. You still have that, that sin that you still have your flesh. Amen. Uh, and, and James uh, uh, makes his case uh, he, he's uh, uh, that our yielding this morning uh, uh, to uh, of, the, of sin is often because we think the world is offering us something that God is keeping from us, uh, that God is withholding some things uh, from us. I've heard it said you Christians miss out on some of uh, no, uh, you're missing out, amen. Uh, my God gives every good gift uh, and every perfect gift this morning. It comes from above, not below. Amen. Thinking that way, uh, uh, often uh, we often think that way that it comes from below because we don't understand the nature uh, uh, of our God. Uh, and, and James uh, wants us to understand that that truly good things uh, come from the hand of God. Uh, uh, Woodrow Crowe said, "What you believe about God." Uh, determines what you believe about everything else. Uh, what you believe about God determines what you believe about everything else. Uh, how can anybody this morning question uh, the goodness of God? Uh, matter of fact, if you're lost here this morning, if you think about it, uh, you can't question the goodness of God. God makes it to rain on the just uh, and the unjust. Amen. Now, Amen. Hey, think about that. If you didn't have any rain down at your house because you uh, uh, were uh, lost and on your way to hell, uh, you would be uh, you wouldn't have any grass, you wouldn't have any gardens and all those things that go with it. Uh, but thank God this morning, God loved you uh, in your lost condition. Uh, matter of fact, He loved you enough that He sent His only begotten Son uh, that whosoever would believe in Him uh, should not perish. Uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, I'm just reminding you this morning, no matter where you are and who you are this morning, God loves you. Amen. Amen. Uh, God gives us every good uh, and every perfect gift. Uh, it doesn't come from the world, uh, but it comes from above. Uh, every person this morning uh, has experienced uh, the goodness of God. God is good to saint and to sinner alike. Uh, and if you read, if we read, if we're to read, have time to read the Old Testament this morning, it's without a doubt that God was good to the nation of Israel. Amen. And can y'all agree? I mean, just take, take and look. They'd murmur, they'd complain, they'd turn back, they'd do this, they'd do that, they'd doubt, they'd bicker. They do all those things, but in the end, God was good. In the end, every time they needed God, God was there. Then this morning, we'd probably be able to raise our hand, and the brothers sung about it and said, every step of the way, God's been good, or God's been with me. I'm just reminding us that God has been good. Nahum said, the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble this morning. That's our God. The goodness of God runs through the Old Testament. And the old, the twelve tribes, they could, they could relate to James's writing when he talks uh, about the goodness of God. James, uh, and he said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. But nevertheless, in life's trials sometimes bring in to question the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Be honest this morning, none of us have a halo. Mm -hmm. Maybe y'all do, I don't. But there's times you question, why? I heard it said back there this morning, what God sending this in my life? 
I've heard people say that all the time. Why would God, if God loves me, why would he do this? I'm just reminding you this morning that God does love you. Matter of fact, he set the bar for the best gift, the good and the perfect gift, when he gave his only begotten son. Now, God loved you then, and he still loves you now. Uh, and, and, and sometimes, uh, when we look at what's happening, and we see what's happening in others' lives around us, we can question the goodness of God this morning. I want to look this morning at two aspects in verse number 17 of the goodness of God. They're connected to, to God's nature. And I want us to consider them. First of all, I want us to consider the generosity here of God. And then the stability of God's goodness. Look at verse 17. It's written in a very unusual way. Look at what James said. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Amen. Do you see that? He uses it twice, every, two times, good gift, every perfect gift, double, every, two, every gift, uh, two times, James uh, uses the, the, the word every and gift. Why would James write it that way? Why would James talk about that good gift and that perfect gift? He is magnifying for you and I. He's magnifying for those that have gone on before us uh, of the generosity of our God. Uh, he, he's magnifying. He's telling you that everything, uh, everything, every good, every perfect gift, he said it's all inclusive. Uh, he said it doesn't matter. He said it's all, all of it. He said it comes uh, from God. He's letting us know that it doesn't matter what you think, but it's all included. Amen. Every good, every perfect gift comes from above. The word gift in, in our in, is in our English both times it means the same. I don't speak Greek. My sons in Bible college, he's took about way more than I ever had to. He's took about three years of the Greek, and, and, and I was talking to him about these words, and I can look them up, but he, he said, Dad, those words, that word gift, every good gift and every perfect gift, he said, in the Greek, he said, they're actually two different words. He said, when we translated it over to the English, and I believe the translation's perfect, King James Bible, I'm understand, understand that. But, but he said, they're a little bit different. And, and, and James is wanting us to know James is telling us that we need never to lust after the things uh, 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 around this world uh, because the nature of our God is that God is good to his children. Amen. 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 You know, I love that verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the Amen. days of my life. When I got to studying that one a long time ago, I ran across... Mays Jackson, you may never heard of him, but Mays was a, one of them preachers just had seemed to have the power of God all over him. And they told about Mays Jackson in that verse. And they said, Mays would say, asked one time, he said, uh, he asked his wife, he said, I need to go down to the post office. You want to go with me? She said, no, I got things to do. He said his daughter was still living at home and he said he walked over and said, honey, would you go with me down to the post office? I need to mail these things out. She said, Daddy, I'm busy. She said, I, I can't go right now. He said, that's fine. He said, me and Jesus will just go. Amen. And he said he got in the car and he said he dusted that mirror and said he looked back and there was goodness and mercy. And he said he, he looked, he said he got down to the post office and they said there was an old, there was a black man standing down there and said, May, he's got out of the car. Said he walked around to the other side and he opened up the door and he said, come on out, Jesus. And he said, that black man said, preacher, he said, you're one spooky fella. I'm just <laughs> reminding you, I'm just telling you that thank God, goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. Our God is good to us this morning. He's good to us. For a long time, I'd get in my truck and I'd adjust my mirror and say, there's goodness and mercy. I didn't see them. Don't get, don't get too crazy. But I knew. But I know they was there. I know they was there. Goodness 
and mercy. God gives us good. God gives us good gifts, perfect gifts. My son tells me, and if it's wrong, he'll be here in a week or two. You can blame it on him. <laughs> but the gift, the first one, not the good gift, it is the act of giving. It's the giving. And then uh, the, the second perfect gift, that is the object of giving, he said. And, and, and so it, it, it would read that every act of giving is good. And every, uh, and every gift is, is perfect. Do you understand? Do you understand what he's saying? And, and so it gives us a, a reminding that, that not only that what God gives us is good, but what in the way that God gives us, it's perfect. Amen. Uh, but but the, uh, all of us have received gifts that weren't so good. Ain't, ain't that right? <laughs> But the way they were given, they were given in such love that they become invaluable to you. I pastored 18 and a half years and we had little kids there. And brother, they'd come out of them Sunday school rooms and they'd say, Preacher, I made this for you. <laughs> It'd be just a little picture of a stick figure. I said, That's you, Preacher. <laughs> yes, brother, it was tall. They, they understood. <laughs> And I thought, I'd never use that. But they give it out of a heart of love. Amen. So where is it today? It's in my stuff, in my study. All those pictures. I've got pictures from 18 and a half years of pastor. I've got pictures of kids that are married and grown now that they made me. When I do a wedding, I take them pictures with me. <laughs> so you remember making that one? No, I don't remember. I remember. I remember. It was given with a heart of love. But then there's been times you've been given a gift and it's a good gift. And it was given in a bad attitude about it. I drawed your name so I had to get it. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that at Christmas time so everybody didn't have to spend a fortune on everybody. You just draw, you get them in the gift, you give them. I drawed your name, I had to get it for you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I know you love me. Might have been a great gift. But it was just given in the wrong way. But what James is telling us is that the gift that God gives us, and that is good. And the way that God gives it is perfect. Amen. In other words, it's complete. It's the right way to give it. If I were to take to tell you this morning, say, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna cook you a ribeye and a baked potato. That sounds pretty good, don't it? <coughs> But if I told you, I said, listen, I don't have no silverware or nothing like that. We're just going to use this trash can back here. <laughs> My lid, it, it's molded a little bit, but I'll just lay that right in the top. Of <laughs> the gift is good. But the way it's been given might not be so good. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But James is reminding the reader that everything God has given you is good. Amen. And the way that God has given it to you is complete. It's perfect. That's what that word perfect means. It means complete. My daddy and mama used to give me whippings. <laughs> yeah, but most of y'all are old enough to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mama said, you got a good one. <coughs> it might have been good for what they intended it to accomplish. But the way I received that whooping was not good. <laughs> I did not think it was perfect. I got a good mama and I got a good daddy. I love them. They love me. They do anything in the world for me. But I never did think that whooping was good. I never did. I'm still not sure about it today. Amen. <laughs> but when God gives you something, He gives it in a way that it should be given. Look with me just a minute. If you got your Bible, Luke chapter number 11. I can turn there and read it if you don't have it. But I want you to listen. James is trying to help us in life. He's trying to help us here in these trials and these temptations of life and trying to remind us of how good God is to us. But look in Luke chapter number 11, verse number 11. <coughs> he said, 
If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, he will give him a stone. Or if he should ask you a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more should your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Said, "You're old with fleshly nature. You know how to give good gifts to your children." He said, "How much more does the Father know? The Father from above, the one that knows everything." He said, "He knows how to give you the good and the perfect gifts of life." James is magnifying for us that in the trials that you think ain't no good, God give them and, 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 and the right, He's given them to you in the right way. James is magnifying the goodness of God. Think about this. Satan in the Garden of Eden. He deceived Eve by how? making her think that that tree that God told them they could not eat of, that God was withholding something from them that was good for them. It's exactly what he done. And he said, you'll surely not die if you eat of that. He made them think that there's something you're missing out on. Isn't that what's going on today? It's been going on. It's just magnified now. The world's making us think that we're missing something. If you don't live this way, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, uh, if you don't believe this way, you're missing out on something. Uh, but I'm reminding you, James is reminding us this morning that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above. Yeah. He's reminding us. He's trying to help us in our temptations. So Jesus or James is reminding us you don't have to go out into this world to find what you need. Our God is by nature generous. Our God gives us what we need. You think about that manna <laughs> that God would give to the nation of Israel? It was what they needed. For a while that manna seemed to be pretty good. But it was after a little bit that they thought, maybe there's something else. Maybe he'd give us a little meat. <laughs> you know what God done? He done? He did. <laughs> then that wasn't enough. You understand, by nature, why is the world so unsatisfied? It's that sin nature. Amen. But James is trying to remind his readers that you've got <coughs> everything you need that has been given to you in the perfect way and it cometh down from above. It's not of this world. Satan says, well, you need this. Here's, here's what you need to know. He's a liar. Let me say it again. Satan says, you need this. He's a liar. Every good gift, every perfect gift cometh from above. Who is above? God is above. The Father. Listen, uh, preacher, I want to clean up my life. I want to stop drinking. Good. Do that. Preacher, I want to stop doing drugs. Good. Do that. Preacher, I'm going to stop lying. Good. Do that. But do you understand if you're going to do it, it's going to come from below. And what you'll be is a sober, clean, honest person. But do you understand my salvation this morning? cometh from above. Amen. Not from below. Not anything that I do. Great. Do all those things. I hope you can do it. But I'm just reminding you that my salvation cometh from above. That the gifts that I have of eternal life, it cometh from above. From the Father above. Except a man be born of above, from above. Religion we was talking about that this morning. You understand, religion offers gifts from down here. Religion is the horizontal solution to man's problems. My salvation is not horizontal. 
but it cometh Amen. from above. Amen. Your salvation is not horizontal. It has nothing to do with religion. It cometh from above, from the Father of lights. Salvation is the Lord. James is magnifying the generosity. These believers, evidently, if you study this, their trials made them feel like God was not being good to them. Anybody ever feel like that? I have, I'll be honest. But he was. <laughs> but he was being good no matter what you go through this morning. <laughs> in, in life's trials, no matter what, it, we need to recalibrate a little bit. <laughs> wow, this is terrible. It was a day or a week or two ago. My son-in-law, my daughter, my son, myself, my wife. This has just been the worst day. All of us at one time. It's been the worst day. That's what we said. And I thought, my goodness. We might need to recalibrate the way we're thinking. <laughs> because every good gift every perfect gift come off from God. Amen. We may not think it's such a good thing, but if it comes from God, it's good. Amen. I didn't think them weapons that come from my daddy were good. But evidently, my daddy knew Greek. <laughs> <laughs> they come from above. Not only is God his generosity being magnified here, and let me give you one more, and I promise it won't take you here as long. But his stability is being magnified. Listen to what he said. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. It cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turn. It's the, the Father of lights. The Jewish people could under, understand that. They would identify that with God being the creator. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. They, they understood that. You and I, I hope, understand that this morning. But do you understand that with the sun, with the moon, and with the stars, there's a balance. They move. They move about. You might see a shooting star. It, it, it shot out of where it was and went somewhere else. They, they're bearable to stay. Do you understand? Jesus, or James says, the Father of lights, whom there is no bearables. James says, the one that sends the light to you, the one who gives you the moon, the sun, and the stars, he said, there's no bearables. What's he mean? That God does not change. It's a complicated thought. But God does not change. Well, preacher, I sure wish God was the same as he was 50 years ago. Good news, he is. <laughs> preacher, I sure wish that Bible was the same as it was 50 years ago. It is. <laughs> Do you understand God is the same yesterday, today? And what's that last part? James is, is not only magnifying the generosity of God, he's magnifying the stability of preacher my life is important. You need God. You need God. Preacher, everything seems so unstable in my life. You need God. You need to give your life to God. No variables. There's no shifting. There's no shooting. <laughs> There's no end to God's resources. You ever had somebody that Man, they, they were a great help to you in life. But something happened that they just couldn't help you anymore. Maybe they got sick. Maybe they got older. Maybe they ran out of money, whatever it was. But they just couldn't help you. The resources changed. But do you understand what James is saying here? <laughs> they said, that doesn't happen with God. God is always the same. Yesterday, today, forever, what God James is saying, listen, there's no end to the resources of God. 
There's no end to the goodness of God. There's no end to the giving of God. Thank God this morning God doesn't get old. Amen. And just forget all about us. Thank God God doesn't run out of money. And just forget all about His people. But God keeps giving. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Every single day. Not one goes by that goodness is not there with me. Not one goes by that mercy doesn't follow me. Why? Because my God's got all the goodness and all the mercy. My God doesn't run out. Amen. He never changes. Give me this, and I'm done. Jesus, I'm going to use this as a light. It's, it's, it's a phone. Okay? I know that. But if you're standing perfectly in front of this, and if she had that flashlight they got on, if she had that on, it wouldn't be any shadow because you're straight in front of it. It won't be a shadow. Y'all with me? Okay? Stay awake five more minutes, I promise. But if I move to the left, there'll be a shadow. If I move to the right, there'll be a shadow. Why is there a shadow? Because I moved. Not because the light moved. You understand God is the light. There is no variable of God. He stays right where He's at. Amen. And if there's a shadow, it's because I moved. God's stability is being magnified over and over again. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father never changes. Our president some years ago said he was going to run. He, he did run and he's probably running. And I think he ran the same thing. Mr. Trump said, make America great again. That is a big challenge. I want you to hear it. It's a big challenge. I don't know if it could be done by man. Do you know when God called me to preach the gospel, He didn't say, I need you to make me great again. He didn't say that. This morning I didn't feel any pressure to preach to you and make God great again. You know why? Because He's always been the great I am. They understand that. A huge task to make America great, but not to make God. Because he's always been the great I am. He always will be the great I am. That's just the way I am. It may not help. How do I apply the text? You can ramble on for 20 minutes, preacher, or 30 minutes, whatever it's been. You can ramble on, but how do I make the, how do I apply that to my life? It's when we are satisfied with what God gives us. God's good. God's gracious. God is stability. So don't let the trials of life make you think that the, that you're missing out on something that the world is wanting to give you. Be satisfied. Paul said, "I've learned to be. I've learned to be satisfied in where I'm at and what God has given me." Preacher, it's hard to see the goodness in this, and this is my last statement. I promise. Turn over to the book of John. What, I need you to see this. John chapter, I, I know the verse. You're going to know the verse. And I want you to see it in the Bible. I want you to make application. John chapter number 3, verse number 16. Preacher, I know that. I know that verse. Okay. Now let's listen to it together. Ready? For God so loved the what? The world. Mm -hmm. That he gave, you see that? Gave. Gave the generosity of God. Gave. What? His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting. Romans 8 32, I'm not going to ask you to turn there, but he, it said, He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 
John 3.16, he said he gave it. His only begotten son. That's the best, the, the most perfect gift he could ever give. He set the bar. He said, I'm going to start this relationship out by giving you the best gift you can ever give. There will never be any variance with it. If there's a shadow, you moved, not him. So if he started out my relationship by giving me the best gift, how much more does that make me realize this morning that everything he's been giving me has been good for me? Matter of fact, it's been perfect. I don't see that preacher. Recalibrate your thinking this morning. Start looking at heavenly things. Spiritual things. Stop looking at what's acceptable down here. That's what we was talking about back there. It's what's acceptable in the eyes of God. Amen. Every good gift. Every perfect gift. James uses it twice. He's magnifying it. He's, he, he's making sure you get it. Cometh from above. Mm-hmm. From the Father of lights, of whom there is no variableness. Did God create the sun and the moon? Yes, he did. Done it in just a few days. And he done it in the beginning. Adam Eve sinned, Satan beguiled him, beguiled Eve, Adam followed right along. Sin entered into the world by one man, but redemption come by one man, by the gift of God. God gave his only begotten son. Isn't it amazing how the whole Bible just ties together and how it is explained? family's going through loss of a mother. I've lost grandmother, but I still got my mother. I don't know how that feels. But I know one that does. I know one that knows what you need this morning. Mm-hmm. It may not seem good. I was talking to Brother Philip. He said he got to think about what his mama was doing. Yeah. That's good. You know how that took place? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, I hate to lose my mama. He didn't lose her. She was Jesus. And as long as you know him as Savior, as long as you've accepted him, and that, as long as you believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, and repented of your sins, you'll be there too. Amen. Because it doesn't change. She was 86, is that right? 87. 87. I don't know when she got saved. I'll find out here in a little while. Hopefully. But the same God that saved her is the same God that has saved you this morning. Amen. Why? Because he doesn't change. There's no change. Preacher, I'm going through, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. I know. Life's tough. Willard Thomas, he was a poem preacher. He preached in poems. It was unreal. But he said this. I've got it in the fly leaf of my Bible. He said it years ago when I was a young preacher. I never forgot it. He said, at my very best, in myself, I'm no match for what life has to offer. That's what he said. When I'm standing with God. Amen. When I'm standing in the light. When I'm in line with what God wants me to do. God is given. When I look behind me. Goodness. Huh. There's goodness. There's mercy. And there's God in front of me leading. <clears throat> I don't know how anything gets to me. God has to let it. God gives it. And when he does, it's right. It's right. It's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I never did believe that. (laughs) Never did. That's what they told me. 
And I believe her. And the Lord said, listen, when James said every good and every perfect gift come from above, I believe that. I hope you do. I don't know what your needs are this morning. I don't know what you need. These altars are open. You may just need to recalibrate your thinking this morning. I've been looking at this all wrong. God, I'm sorry. I just need to tell you thank you. Maybe God's been so good to you. You're just busting out. You need to get down and thank him. Maybe you're here this morning. You're lost. You never received salvation from God. You, you've never believed. God's still saving you this morning. If God ever saved, he still saves. Amen. <laughs> Preacher said one time, he said, maybe God's not, not saving as many people as he used to. No, he is. He's saving exactly the ones he, he, that's supposed to be saved. Amen. He's still safe. Not his will that any should perish. That's you this morning, you ought to come. They're going to come, brother, you come sing. Camera's off. <laughs>